So maybe we could uh, move now to the migration side. So basically, we just give I'll give a very short introduction because Anna Issa is our expert here on the migration, and she would uh, she would give you the full rundown. But just from my side, really, the important thing here is um, the documentation is of course the info pack. There will also be information in the testing conditions document. What's very important is you know we 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 prepare so much of this documentation. Please read it. Please, you know, uh, don't think because you've come to this webinar that you're prepared. Your 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 testers, your your migration experts, your operations people must be familiar with our documentation. Please read it. Uh, another very important point that Anna Issa will make is that during our migration tests, there are some periods where we will ask you not to test anything else, only migration. We cannot police this. We cannot block you. We want you to please pay attention during this period that it's for migration test only and that you would uh, only uh, do the activities which have been prescribed for you during this period. But Anna Issa will go into that, but it's a very important takeaway from this one. So maybe Anna Issa, I'll hand over to you. Hello, good morning. I hope you can hear me. Uh, so good morning to everyone. I'm Anna Issa. <laughs> I'm uh, part of the team that is uh, dealing with the migration um, aspects for the ECMS. So uh, what we will go through now is uh, indeed the steps, the next steps uh, in view of the migration, what is to come forward um, and also a bit of the impacts of this new planning. So I think we can start indeed. So what as Flora has explained in the planning uh, presentation um, that you saw before, the new go live uh, means that we would have new milestones for uh, the migration to production. Uh, but also there was an update or an adaptation of the migration testing plan um, in order to provide us a, a better strategy for uh, preparing the migration uh, into production. And this uh, ends up being that we will have additional tests. Uh, specifically here, we are focusing on the tests for the pre-production environment or the U-test environment. We will have three more uh, tests um, in which uh, one of them is optional. So we have test 9, 11, and 12. Um, this first test, test 9, is a pre-migration rehearsal, a preparation week dress rehearsal, and the migration week and dress rehearsal. So it's a longer test. Uh, and then test 11 and test 12, they're both uh, what we call the preparation week dress rehearsals and migration week and dress rehearsals. You see the acronyms there. Uh, so this information is already part of the info pack under user testing and migration that is published on the ECB website. So I will not uh, go uh, too much on it, but uh, what we can say and remind again, I think we discussed this previously, but the dress rehearsals uh, mean that we would like to test as much as possible in prod like conditions. And that would also uh, reflect in terms of timing. Uh, the rehearsals, however, are um, adapted versions of these uh, tests and of the phase. And in this case, it's for the pre-migration rehearsal because, of course, in production, we have a phase that is seven weeks. And here we will have a phase that is only four weeks, um, well, actually uh, five weeks uh, long or six weeks. But there are other preparations we need to do that we will not need to do in in the production environment uh, because we don't have previous testing in the environment. So this is um, this is the, 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 the direct consequences on the planning uh, for the testing uh, for the migration milestones into production. You saw this in the first presentation. So I think if we then think about what this actually means uh, in terms of the counterparty involvement. So if we can Go to the yes, thank you. So what what it actually means these migration tests and the counterparty involvement. So um, the the participation of the counterparties in the tests is the same uh, or is based in the activities that are expected uh, in production. So if in this case for the migration to production, besides the connectivity phase where the counterparties will um, try the access uh, via U2A and A2A when applicable. Uh, the counterparties are only foreseen to participate in the pre-migration phase, 
uh, by setting up their own users and checking the data that was set up by the NCBs. So this being said, if this is the expectation, then for uh, when we apply this into the next upcoming migration tests, this would mean that the counterparty participation is expected only in test nine, in the part of the test that is a pre-migration rehearsal, which we saw it's from end April to uh, 7th of June, the schedule. However, as I explained, because this test will be a short version of the test, uh, we are still investigating at your system level which activities will need to be uh, executed because we have a smaller uh, time frame. We will have to have uh, also a shorter uh, version of the test. So we are uh, uh, checking currently which activities will actually need to be re-executed. And in that sense, since the only activity for the counterparties is the setup of their own users, this has still to be confirmed if it's needed. And so the part, the actual confirmation of this participation by the counterparties uh, is expected at the end of the quarter uh, of this first quarter. So by end of March, we should have a clarity if the counterparty participation will actually be required for test nine or not. Uh, still, if it's confirmed, that the execution uh, of counterparty activities would be planned for the test, then this would be no earlier than the 27th of May. So as I explained, test nine starts on the 29th of April, uh, but counterparty uh, activities would only start on the 27th of May if we would have these activities. So for the other tests that you saw, so test nine for the preparation week and uh, migration week and dress rehearsals and test 11 and test 12, there would be no uh, counterparty participation expected. Unless, however, as you know, the NCBs at, uh, at, at national level, they can request the counterparties to execute some other activities necessary. This is uh, catered at national level. It depends on, um, on some national particularities. So if this is the case, if they request you these activities, whatever the phase they are requested, for in production, then it would mean that probably you would need to participate also in the tests. But this will then be communicated directly to you by your NCBs. Okay, so uh, just to clarify, then in conclusion, only test nine. Then this part here of the involvement of the counterparties as well in the test, what is important, I think Bobby uh, made a reference to it at the start, is um, or in the introduction to this presentation is indeed it's really important that uh, the tests is uh, the migration test is respected in its execution by the counterparties and what do we mean by this first of all you should only execute the activities that you have been assigned to so unless it's a planned activity unless you receive the request from your ncb and it's in the in the, in the plan that you receive that's part of the activities then you should not uh, you should not execute any other activity. But it's also important that you respect the time. So, for example, when we had the connectivity testing in pre-prod, uh, there was several delays by some of the counterparties. So it's important that you keep to the timings uh, of the activities. Uh, and also then respecting the environment availability by not carrying out non-migration tasks in the environment during the migration test. but even accessing the environment. Uh, the same would be expected in prod that you are not in the environment unless you have an activity to perform. Um, and so you should practice the same in, in the migration tests. The, the fact is that unwanted activity will create disruptions or unnecessary effects on the migration test that we cannot then you know, reverse uh, or filter out. So it's important that we respect this in order to have uh, let's say, valuable um, migration tests uh, that are then fundamental for the validation of the migration strategy for the ECMS to production. So we would like to reiterate here because we saw some activities in the past in some of the tests uh, that were not supposed to be carried out, some, some even not partaking to migration, they were normal uh, user testing. So I would really uh, ask you to pay attention, even though you are not involved in the test, uh, as it will be for the majority of the migration tests in the pre-prod uh, environment, it is still requested of you that you take into account the dates of these tests and do not uh, execute any other tests during this moment in the environment, 
uh, as it could affect the migration test ongoing. So now moving a bit more into the production um, timeline, and uh, here is a recall of the migration journey uh, in terms of uh, production on how do we get ready for the go live. Uh, so we would start by the, the registration form submission to the NCBs and then the connectivity to, to ECMS via ESMIC. Uh, of course, based on the green light of the NCBs, and then we have the migration of data that is uh, mostly done by the NCBs and CSTs, and then the counterparty would set up their own reference data, also upon a green light of the NCB. We will have the preparation week, and then the migration week, and it's all in charge of the NCB, and then we have the go live. So we had previously started this journey. Uh, the last time we had this focus session, we had already uh, highlighted to the start of the journey that it would be in September, and it did eventually start. So if we go to the next slide, what, what we know is that we were, before the decision of the new go-live date, we were already in this ECMS connectivity setup and execution phase. It was already ongoing for production, so we were actually in the step two of the migration journey, and then the phase was put on hold. Um, because it was the, the discussions and the decisions of a new go-live date. So with this new go-live date, as mentioned by Flora, the connectivity phase was also replanned. And so the phase will start now again on the 2nd of April 2024, uh, and is ex expected that the counterparties would start around 6th of May 2024. Of course, this is a tentative date because it would uh, it is essential that you only start upon a green light of your NCBs, of your relevant NCB. Um, but uh, it is expected that it would be around 6th of May. This is provided the core CB will have the start of the their own activities, then it will be the NCB setting up the data, and only then can the counterparty start. So it's, it's necessary that your NCB finalizes setting you up as a party in ECMS, and therefore, this is a, an expectation date. So we will resume now with the connectivity in, in April, so it's close enough. And the counterparties will then have until the 21st of June to finalize their connectivity testing. So if we go to, to the next slide, it's, it's a kind of a reminder of what are the steps then for this connectivity to ECMS uh, via ESMIC. So as mentioned, the, the the goal or the, the scope is to ensure that there is a full end-to-end -end connectivity to the ECMS via ESMIC. Um, and this is for valid for all actors. Uh, and we want to check if it is working in A2A, so meaning correct inbound and out, outbound message transmission, but also U2A uh, access, so meaning via the ECMS GUI. Um, the A, A2A is applicable only to some counterparties, so not all. So it's um, not mandatory, it's only mandatory if you plan to have an A2A connectivity, same as we had in the connectivity in, in the pre-production environment that happened uh, last, uh, last year, 2023, uh, in the beginning of the year. So when is it planned? As mentioned, the phase will be from 2nd of April to 21st of June, uh, but the first two weeks will be dedicated to 4CB activities uh, for the preparation of the environment. Then we will have the NCBs, CSTs, and TPAs uh, connectivity uh, that will start. Uh, and then the NCBs will also set up the counterparties as parties in the ECMS based on the registration forms received by the NCBs. And so once this activity is concluded, your NCB will provide you a green light uh, to say that you can start uh, the connectivity testing. It is foreseen, as I mentioned, that this would be 6th of May, 2024. Um, this phase will involve all of the actors. Um, then who is the first level of support? It depends a bit on the nature of the problem. So it can be uh, your... Uh, NSP support team, depending on which NSP you selected, can be the ECMS National Service Desk, uh, especially for counterparties. Um, you would you would liaise with these two with these two supports, uh, and um, in case of need, um, the NSP team uh, support and the ECMS National Service Desk can cooperate in uh, 
joint teleconferences. So this is to speed up some of the problems. So this is, you know, it's just repeating in production the the phase we have already done in in uh, pre-production. So the key documents for for these that you should follow because they describe the steps perfectly would be the target services connectivity guide, which is available um, on the ECB webpage. And of course, then there are the selected NSP documents and guides. This depends on your NSP. They will have documents on their website as well. So this is the, the next phase in production, what we will do. But to prepare for these, and as I mentioned, this is the second step in the journey, but there was a step before, which is the submission of the registration forms. And also in preparation for the connectivity, there are certain activities you need to do with your uh, NSP specifically. So in preparation for this phase, um, and we know that this phase had already started and then was put on hold. So we know that for many of the counterparties, you have probably already executed these activities. Um, so you would not need to re-execute them again in principle, uh, but it's still uh, important for you to validate that you have performed all of the necessary steps. So don't wait until you know 6th of May to check uh, that you have all of the necessary pre-requirements to start the connectivity, take care of it now so that you can start on the 6th of May as expected. So for these, you have this uh, kind of a checklist here with these two tasks. So the first one is all of the necessary steps uh, at the NSP, at the network service provider level. So like selecting the NSP, you should have the contract, the e-ordering, uh, the, the requests, for the close group of users uh, subscription, all of these, it's important steps that you should do. They are uh, specified in the in the target services uh, connectivity guide, uh, but you can also check them with uh, your NSP specifically if there is something that you should do. And then there is, of course, the sending of the migration registration form to your NCB. If you haven't done it yet, you should do it. Uh, regarding the registration forms, uh, it it may be necessary that uh, by your NCB that they may request you to resubmit the form uh, or request additional data or confirmation of data. This is also has to do with the evolution of the system and some additional data that might be required for the NCBs to ask you. So this is something that, uh, that it will be based on your NCB request, but please do check if you have sent it already or not. And um, and as I mentioned, the target services connectivity guide or the NSP should be consulted for further information on the on these pre checks uh, that you should do before you start. So that would be the next step for us in production. In the testing uh, side, please do expect to to know more about your participation or not in test nine by the end of the first quarter. And um, Please do, do pay attention that if there is a migration test ongoing to not do other activities in the environment. So I think that's it from my side, uh, but probably there will be some questions. Thank you, Anissa. Uh, super good. So we're being uh, bombarded here with questions. Uh, so I think things are coming in a little bit of a delay. So if I can ask you to stay on, uh, Anissa, then uh, there may be questions that we will come to you. But we're having now a lot of questions come in on um, on the testing, Bobby. If I can bring Bobby back, for sure, Ellen. <laughs> that yeah, would for be sure. great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've had a lot, so I'll try and group them together. You know, in 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 the different uh, areas, if you like. So, firstly, in terms of of connectivity. So, what's very important is the specifications for ESMIG. These are on our uh, on our shared documentation page in the ECB. They're not on the ECMS dedicated page, but we will share all of these in any case, but just to let you know that the ESMIG documents are over there now. There was a question from one participant about a distinguished name issue that was posted here in the chat. I have to say that this issue looks like an incident that you need to raise with your service desk. And this for me is kind of a, a, a general thing. You know that your national service desk is your point of contact and uh, for something related to distinguished names. First of all, you must consult the connectivity guide and then if you are not getting results that are, are, are as expected, then that's when you, you, you liaise with your national service desk. So that particular one that was posted on the DN, uh, I think it's for the national service desk, but it's the wider point. So then we have also, there was a question about uh, four I, um, you know, the, 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 the use of the four eyes functionality. Now from our side, uh, it should be 
Uh, there may be some restrictions to this, but this is definitely also one for those of you. It's very important, of course, that you would work in, in, in operations. Maybe while we're testing, we test in two eyes at the start and then we, we, we progress to the four eyes when we're doing some uh, user acceptance testing or whatever. But for those of you who, of course, will always use it in production, if you're having any issues with the four eye functionality at the moment, please raise an incident with your service desk. Please discuss it with them. And there may be some restrictions. Uh, I think there are one or two open incidents related to this functionality, but the the the, the national service desk will let you know. Then, um, in relation to Econs two, there were some questions about Econs two. Of course, how ECMS will interact with Econs two. This is a very important part. It may be that it may have to interact with Econs two. It will definitely be that we will have to test this. We will bring you more information on this. If not in a future uh, session, we will bring it. In a, in a in a in a maybe in a dedicated session. So let's uh, let's table Econs two, but it is very very important and it will be tested before we go live. The interaction of Econs two and uh, how it works or how it how it would work were we to have such a situation where Econs two would have to be brought up. The testing conditions document, the next one will be released on the twenty sixth of January. So in two days time. What's very important for everyone is that in the testing conditions document there is always uh, a notice to say when the next one will be coming. So for those of you who want to know when the next one is coming, it will always be in the current edition. So this is a very important one for all of you as well. And this is why this document is your Bible. You will see the, the, the updates and you will see when the next set of updates are coming. There was a question about testing. Um, I think what's very important here, what Anna Issa was speaking to you about in the connectivity testing there was we're talking about connecting to production. So. The, this has nothing to do with what you will test in the pre-production environment. You know, we will open, as, as Bamini rightly stated, we will open all of this functionality to you. We open it in stages. We will make it clear in the testing conditions. And likewise, also for the migration testing, there, if there are any restrictions in the migration testing, we will also include this in the testing conditions document. So this is very important for you to consult this as we say, you know, read the manual. This is the most important one. Uh, the info pack is important, but the testing conditions, both from a testing and from migration perspective, is very important. Another very important document is the fundamental test cases. This shows the fundamental uh, the test cases that you will need to pass in order to access the platform that your NCB will, will certify you as ready to access the platform, but it also gives the overview of the fundamental functionality functionality of ECMS. So I think I've gone through everything. There was also a mention about the planning of our bill module, the testing of the bill module. We're not there yet. We have um still some uh we have still some uh, uh, uh changes being made to the bill module. We're still working on that, but it will be opened up it will, there will be invoicing and we will uh, we will let you all know when the time comes this will also be in the testing conditions document so you can see how important this document is i think i have answered all of the yes i think i've answered all everything that i i, I thought was open there super thank you bobby um there's there's a question or two about um about maybe for you, uh, Anissa, uh, about the if, if there's specific documentation about the migration testing, and if so, where they can be found. You want to bring a word on that? Yes. Can you still see? It? Okay. Yeah, we see and hear you. Good. So no, for the migration testing, we um, as as I mentioned before, or the migration in particularly, in particular, sorry. Um, there could be some national particularities of the NCBs, uh, of the different NCBs. So the documentation, if it's shared, is shared directly by the NCBs with the counterparties. Uh, so whatever documentation is available for the tests, they are made available through, or even the migration in production, they are made available directly through the NCB. Now, what you can find published on the ECB website is, of course, as mentioned, is the dates for the migration tests. Um, and even in the info pack, uh, you have more details on the um, division of the test, let's say. So by actor, when would they be expected to participate in a specific test? So this information is included in the info pack. Um, and then specific documentation uh, saying which step you need to do when, uh, then this is uh, provided by the NCB in case there is um, 
counterparty activity expected in that test. So as you may uh, see, only only up to now, only test four uh, in, um, had the participation of the counterparties because it was a pre-migration dress rehearsal. Uh, and besides that, the connective, the different connectivity phases in 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 the in this case in the U test environment. So uh, that's why also you might only have received information once about migration tests because this was the only test and it was in I think April or May uh, 2024, so it's, uh, 2023, so it has been a while. But uh, now of course if test nine, uh, the counterparty participation is confirmed, then uh, your NCB should, should uh, provide you uh, more information on uh, when your activity is expected. We had a few questions about a specific slide. You want to say a few words on uh, on this one? Uh, so it's about the um, the uh, production migration. So I think they're referring to this slide, right, Anisa? Yes. So this slide, it's uh, so this these and the pre so the previous previous slide to this is the journey to production. So to clarify, this is the migration journey in production. So it's not about the migration test, it's about the steps that you that we will take in order to reach the go live uh, in the production environment. So based on this, and we are on step two, or we will start step two uh, soon, we were in step two, and we will restart. Uh, so it's important that you check that you have executed step one, which means... Oh, we lost, we lost your voice, Anissa. Yeah, we lost you still. Okay, while she's gone, but Elena. Exactly. Just, yeah, we move yeah, to yeah. Bobby and then we bring you back <laughs> in. So, okay. Yeah, yeah. So, Bobby, so over to you. Yeah, yeah. So, basically, what's important here, there was a question uh, in the chat about will we be able to test during the migration phase? So, I think for me, there's two points. And Issa made the point during our migration testing, there will be restrictions to your testing. And Anna Issa will make that clear. But during migration in production, which Anna Issa is going through with you now, our test environment will be open. And while we have a formal end of testing in the planning, you know, for the end of September or whatever, the test environment will be open. You will have access. You will be able to test in October. You will be able to test right up to the uh, you will be able to test right up to the go live and even after, because, of course, you know, when we when we move to production, we will then be testing the new releases in the test environment. So there is no plan to close the test environment. For those of you, uh, the only restriction, as I said, in the test environment may be brought about by, as Anna Issa explained, the migration test. And then we would ask you not to, to test other things that are non-migration related during that period. Yeah. And then when we move to production, you will still be on the lower level, able to test as much as you want, all functionalities with no restriction while this pre-migration that Anna is describing here uh, is, is taking place. And then for the, the step two, as Anna said, you know, the connectivity, this was the point that some of you have already reached. Those of you who have not, we ask you to, to catch up. And those of you who have, you know, you are now already ready. We had a little bit of a halt because of the rescheduling, but now we can start to progress again, follow the timetable that's being set for you by the, the relevant documentation and those of you who were who had not reached it to that time, now is the time to catch up. I think that's the the, the summary of Anna Issa's uh, points and also the migration related uh, questions that we had. And then the fundamental test cases. There was another question in the in the chat. Is there a link between the functionality and the fundamental test cases? So this is the fundamental test case documentation. In that documentation is literally. The, the section of the UDFS, the section of the documentation, the, the description of the functionality, and everything is in this. So that is a uh, very, very important indeed for you to, to, to know. Yeah. All right, super. Um, I don't know if. Uh... Oh, sorry. No, there was one more, Ellen. There yeah. was one more, and it was an important <laughs> one as well. It was a, it was a question, Ellen, about. Our, our, our period of disconnecting where we disconnect from from T2S and from CLM. And of course, there will be restrictions, you know, there will be the point is that you could at the moment, you know, the flow, the messaging flow between uh, ECMS and uh, between ECMS and the other services is is cut off. Yeah. But nonetheless, there are numerous functionalities and there are lots of things that you will be able to test. Testing is not halting. 
that we will be concentrating on we will be concentrating on functionalities and certain things where we'll personally be taking the opportunity to do a volume test for example during this period and certain things like that in order to you know to kind of keep the testing continued but to be able to to be able to do it and also there is the simulator which will be reconnected so it's not as good sadly as the t2s as good as the clm but nonetheless the simulator is there to bring further value and the the it it you know it is it has been used before so we will try to make it you know as good as we possibly can but of course as you know the the as you all know the best is when we're fully connected and I explained to you the reason why we must disconnect, disconnect in order to to give the NC to give the 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 T2S community and the T2 community production like conditions during that period. Thank you, Bobby. So I think we covered a lot there. I just want to see if we can bring uh, Anisa back. Do we have sound on you again, or? I think so. Yes, we do. Yes. Super. Apologies for that. No worries. So, is there uh, another question that you would like me to address, Eileen? So it's a bit, it's a bit of uh, chaotic in the chat. I, I don't know if Bobby s confirmed this, but there was a question about um, the connectivity in phase that we would have, and then if the other functionalities would be available. But I think Bobby replied. Bobby covered it. that. Yeah, yeah indeed. Exactly. That's only the the connectivity is for prod environment, not for yeah. the user testing mm -hmm. environment. So I think that one was covered. And as I mentioned, the info pack uh, on the user testing and migration contains the dates for the migration tests, so it should be available there. Uh, but I think also the testing conditions, I think Bobby mentioned before, also usually cover any unavailability of the environment. So you could also check there. Is there other questions, Eileen, that you would like me to? I think uh, this covers it. We are, you are bombarding us here. So thanks a lot for that, uh, for all the participants. But, uh, you know, I think we, we are covered on most of it. Um, we're just double checking here. Is there anything more we want to go back to now? Bobby, Flora, is there anything that we're missing? I think we have managed to cover most of the, the questions in here. So then I just want to thank uh, Anissa as well. And thanks for coming back um, thank for picking up questions. And also, Bobby, for you to, uh, to jumping in here. Thanks. Uh, there's, one, there's one thing, yeah. Eileen. That oh. I've been I've I've been I've been referring to mandatory test cases. This is from my old T two days here in the ECMS. They're called the fundamental test cases. Yeah. So uh, just to to everyone uh, uh, in the in the terminology, it is definitely the the fundamental test cases here in ECMS. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Super. Thanks for that, Bobby.